only time I ask for a credit is if I feel like the comic in front of me has done bad. If it's like two comics from a struggle, cool. yeah, yeah, you need like, I'm like let me just get a little undercurrent of like there might be a little shit yeah here. yeah 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 i get that i get that because because i do think american crowds are used to the end of the show being always a big good person so sometimes they're like eh, there's a couple of crap but then if it's like just nothing but shit people yeah they're like, so sometimes you got to be like eh, this next one might be something different just to jump on this only time i really do credits and welcome to the show today is august 9th 2022 this is everything but the scores with danny jollis my name is danny jollis this is a sports podcast that isn't really about sports. If you watch a ton of sports, this is all the stories they don't cover. If you don't watch sports at all, this is all the stories you'll care about and none of the other stuff. Those of you that watch sports, I mean, we are, I'll tell you, it's a desert. It's a desert of stories right now. There's just nothing happening in sports. It is rough. And yet, we found enough to make it happen. But whew, I just keep looking being like, there's got to be something. Whatever, it's just baseball. Just baseball like a nightmare. Uh, subscribe, rate, comment, tell a friend, get involved. Uh, one of our stories today will come from somebody who messaged me. And that means the gosh darn world. Uh, Chris? I'm laughing. I don't need. Can I tell you why I'm laughing? You may. You just said there's nothing to talk about and followed it with just subscribe, like, and follow. You basically like, I've got no nothing to talk about. I make it work, but I'm telling people this. <laughs> you this sounded podcast, so depressed before it's been you so, promoted. You don't even know what I've had to be through. The uh, amount of work I've had to do to find things because everybody's just it's just baseball. What? Hang baseball on. Baseball goes nowhere. What? Whoa. What? What's the deal? You don't talk about my sport here. We do talk about your sport here. We're going to talk about your sport here so today. Don't, just don't blunt me in with baseball. Yeah, but you got. Don't love me that back shit sport. You got less drama. Your soccer players got less drama going on these days. No, that's drama, mate. Is there? But we'll get into it. Joining me today are, first off, our co-host, uh, co-producer, co-friend. No cop for everybody. Hello, hello. Ooh. Co-friend. I like that. I like that intro. That was fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> I know, would you believe I, I off the cuffed it? Would you believe wow. I just thought of that on the fly? <laughs> That's right. That's cool. Thanks, man. And then sometimes we have a guest here. Sometimes we don't. Today, we do, in fact, have a guest. Ooh. And he's a great guest. He's a friend. He's a buddy. He is British. You've seen him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great comic. He's a friend. He is not in Coldplay. Chris Martin, everybody. All right. Thank you. Hi, guys. <laughs> Rubbing your dog. Is she is she on camera? She's not on camera, Does but we look sometimes like a... get a shot of her if we if we want to see a shot of her. She is. Will uh... she just stay there the whole? Yes. Yeah, she'll stay. Right. She'll. She's pretty good. Every now and then she'll get a little. Uh... When we start talking about baseball. She gets touchy. She'll get a little touchy, yeah, and she's, she's like, like "Let's you... get to some stories. Yeah, let's get to. Let's, let's keep it going. Come on. Let's get to some stories." Uh, I do want to start off by saying I apologize to those those that know the podcast know sometimes Starbucks is given to our guest. And this week, the Starbucks across the street had one person working at it. Mm. The line was insane and I've never been more like upset for a person. One person on till and on doing everything. Doing everything. You know, like not a Starbucks. That's yeah. What is the point? Just the most amount of people in line, and just and just me looking, being like, "Oh, she'll. This girl will never get to the end of this line." How was she? Did she look flustered? She looked broken. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that she had hit a because I've been there. I've been at that. I worked only one job. I was trying to think of it because it was like at a diner. You're working all day, like but yeah. But the turnover means more money, so there's a reward. It is very hard to have a job like that where you're like, "I'm going to work this." There's no chance this line ever gets. Yeah, to it's, it's there's never a quiet time. So I will go the entire morning at full speed for no more money than if it was a quiet day. And no matter how fast I work, I'll never get to zero. So there's just no why even go fast. And are people tipping at a Starbucks? I never quite understand. I mean, the not a ton. Whoa! No. Wow! Whoa! Whoa he's someone. He's camera. very angry about the tipping oh, culture. Uh, I worked at a Starbucks. It's just my. Yeah, camera. what's the tipping like? You worked at a Starbucks? I did for a month. It was the worst job I ever had. It's like working at Disneyland. How intense you, it is! Wow. You, you do get healthcare though, and the only reason I know this is because my wife met a guy who has a a a, a very a sort of <laughs> financially good job, but he also does eight hours a week in a Starbucks for the healthcare. Yeah. Wow. And that is America, guys. That is America. I'm surprised eight hours allows you to get health care. Might be 16. 
Yeah, it's got to be something, but that's hilarious. But I mean, maybe it's because yeah. eight hours in Starbucks, and you can tell us, is actually like 42 hours of a normal job. It's insane. Well, first off, people don't, I mean, people most realize like when people haven't had their coffee, that's the person I'm interacting with the whole time. Mm -hmm. So it's just people who are angry and want mm. what they want. The, the tough, like the tough part is, well, as far as tips go, that's all pooled. Oh. Um, and then uh, you get people who, if it's your, my first day was awful because you get the regulars that come in and expect you to already know who they are and their order. And then they're <laughs> at any slight inconvenience, they're so angry. Regulars mm -hmm. are assholes in any. Yeah. Yes. They're always assholes. They're like literally me being like, hey, what can I get for you? And they go, <laughs> and I'm like, all right. I've never <laughs> seen you before. You should have been, like, you should been like, what's my name? If, hide the yeah. tag. What is my name? <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you think I should know your drink. That's crazy. That's wild. Yeah. I, I worked there for a month and I was like, oh, I'm unhappy. Yeah. Here. You're also still young enough where you're, you got, you got, you don't have health insurance problems yet. No, well now I do. Now I have my. I mean, I have my. Oh. I'm off. You know the fam insurance. So right, because you go until twenty five. Uh, yeah, but I mine changed up because uh, since my family's out of state, uh, and all that stuff, and my, my mom just retired. So there's American no issues. Yeah. Of stuff. Yeah. American issues. Uh, they'll try to kick you off if you give them an, an inch. Oh yeah. Anyway, I apologize for the lack of Starbucks. Chris, did you play sports growing up? Yes. Go on. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, what do you want from me? I'm not getting paid for this thing on more detail. Um, <laughs> some shit green tea that's not from Starbucks. I no. know, I hear you, man. I'm mm. not happy about it. I have a water bottle. The somewhere. sports I played at a relatively decent level were rugby, and I'm going to call it football, because if I say the S word to an English listener... You'll get upset. They'll get upset with you. I will we'll be upset. So when you played what we'll call British football... <laughs> No, 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 because your football's American football, but we're in America. All right, whatever. We call it American football. It, it, listen, it is one of these things where whenever you try to have this argument with somebody, at the end of the day, there will come the moment where somebody will go, okay, but foot, ball, yeah. which sport sounds right? Yeah. And you go, yeah, yeah, exactly. Tough one. You got me there. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, like I've tried to have <laughs> that fight. Let's skip to the end. Yeah. Let's skip to the end of that. Let's skip to the end yeah. of the fight. It, is your, it does make more sense, and therefore you do win. So, uh, Standard football. Yeah. You played. Yeah, I played that. Pretty pretty uh, good. So I'm I'm the thing is in the UK can't it's have it. that's too can't have it. Get a different that's just the end of that. <laughs> when you unscrew the lid and sip it. Can't have like it. an adult. Um nah, we lose. Uh that because it's cause it's the most popular sport in the whole of uh, the UK and the world. Mm -hmm. The bar to be at any level of like semi professional is is so high so mm -hmm. i used to i like i never quite got trials anywhere but i was always in the first team at my school um then when i when i weirdly after the school and university then i played there's a comedians football game in south london in in the uk uh, in london with loads of comedians in the uk so you play people on the tv loads and all that and i normally was quite good in in that world there you go i was like lionel messi because just by nature if i was in my 20s and um wasn't massively out of shape like most comedians in the uk For unlike sure. comedians over here you know you got you got guys that look like they should be on muscle beach on stage at the laugh factory and i'm like you're too muscly to be a comedian yes but in the uk if you're that muscly um you get like booed off stage That's <laughs> so funny. they're like go go off stage stop working out eat some pies Think about what back. you did yeah i mean la but that's also an la thing because you go to new york New there's York some, comics. Some tubs of shit on stage over there. Well, so. I wouldn't go that far, but I'd say that they, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I use that word, but they definitely, you know, they like the, it's a, it's a different world in New York. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's they, more like, of a regular uh, cross section of society. Yes. There is a lot of guys who, I mean, the, I'll tell you, New York City, the late night pizza problem just takes you out. It's just all it does. Do you want to know my, um, my my naughty day in New York. This is naughty for me by uh -huh. my standards. Yes. So very healthy. This is going to sound very vegan, but I'm going to mention that I am a vegan for this story. Mm -hmm. But um, and I think you already know that. And as all vegans will. Exactly. Exactly. I have. It's just it's the problem just is part of it. the problem is when it's a story and you have got to say it, you, uh -huh. then you have to. In the same way, yeah. my wife ever said it was mansplaining, and I pointed out I'm just a, a man explaining something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then I realized by doing that, that was actually mansplaining. <laughs> but yes. um, anyway, so I was in New York, and everyone like I think uh, Ronnie Cheng's like, mate, you have got to go get Joe's Joe's Pizza. Mm -hmm. It's like that's the one, right? That's mm -hmm. the one, Joe's uh -huh. Pizza. That's one of them. Well, he said it's the one. <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah, I'm running, I can have a right, he's got more, he's got more credits than you. I've taken his. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> you were about 
about to go into a hole and you're like, that well. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, Roddy Cheng, movie star, and uh, <laughs> he knows his pizza. So he Danny says, Charles occasionally on TV. No, yeah, no, you've been, you've got, you've been on TV. You've been on big shows, big shows, occasionally. Um, I get on there sometimes. You get on there sometimes. He <laughs> said, go, go to Joe's Pizza. Anyway, obviously go in there. They don't have a vegan pizza, obviously, because it's just not going to be the thing. But all you hear about the whole time, New York pizza is the best pizza all this year. So Hannah gets a slice. And I have never seen her that happy. Mm-hmm. In a, she's eating, She's making noises that <laughs> you could. I could never elicit from her. Um, and then <laughs> she's, just, she's enjoying his pizza so much. And I said, well, I'll have a bite of the crust because there's no dairy and the crust have a bite of the crust and within three seconds of eating that i went fuck it and i just went up and got a slice of the cheese and tomato mm. and then after that i was like i'm having a, an amnesty day so just for the whole day whenever i went past the joe's pizza i got a slice of joe's pizza oh, it's, 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 and that is how you could end up becoming a, a more of a wider cross section of society mm-hmm, in New York. Mm-hmm. so that that's that's how new york comics look how they look so you played you played football football and then uh, rugby i played for an acad i played uh, even though i'm quite small i was gonna say you don't have a rugby build very small um but very fearless <laughs> <laughs> that's good. that's important not my words the words of clive jarman my friend's dad um <laughs> I, <laughs> shout out to clive jarman clive jarman <laughs> i uh I, yeah i used to play for academy called harlequins who are like in the premiership over there but i but then i was like 14 15 and then it was like do you want to become a professional because you literally have to just live in the gym and just eat mm-hmm. I used to fucking eat raw eggs in orange juice and all that stuff, um, which was crazy because protein powder had been invented then. But I, I'm like, I'm like analog. I'm like sure. Rocky. Uh, and then I just, and then I got concussed quite a few times in the last year of school. So, I mean, at some mm. point I'm probably going to, I, the other day I had the weirdest anxiety dream. I was like, I'm, I'm going to get dementia. And then I was like, but then I'm like, there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. I think that we'll have... As long as you, I, I think we're 10 to 20 years away from a very good solution for okay, it. Okay, good. If I can just hold out. Yes. Just if hold. you can just keep that brain for a little bit longer, I do think that that is, some, that is a field. I'll just keep doing Sudoku for the next 20 years. That's yeah, yeah, you got to do your Lumosity or whatever I think. <laughs> I have got yeah. Lumosity. <laughs> I got scared and I downloaded Lumosity. <laughs> I hide it better than you, but I have the same sort yeah, of Yeah, I know. I know all the things. Yeah. My mom got me Lumosity at one point. She was concerned. <laughs> Why, why is she concerned about you getting it? Uh, you know. I'm, I'm, How many head injuries have you had? Uh, not that many head injuries. I got punched once, but that's it. But I've been, uh, I'm forgetful. Oh, okay. So she gets all your two forgetful. And also it's just Jewish mom general anxiety. <laughs> just like, yeah, it could be, you know. I love that. Yeah. Danny's forgotten. He's yeah, forgotten his keys. Forgotten. Get, get him on the apps. Get him lumosity now. Yeah. Uh, do you watch any sports? I watch religiously still uh, Premier League football. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and let's say it. First week of Premier League. It started just this weekend. And my team kicked first game of the season on the Friday night and we actually won, which has been a a turn up for the books after. Hey, you an Arsenal fan? No, I'm just excited. Oh, oh, good. That's very American. Look at that. He's just cheering the idea of a team winning again. I went with you to watch England at at an English uh, um, bar. You watched the final with me. Yeah. I was, I was like, I, was, was like, I want a part of that experience. That was, that was, I remember the first three minutes, obviously England scored. And mm-hmm. I was, I was already then, I got the Danny Jollis nerves. I was like, we've scored too early. And mm-hmm. I proved to be completely correct there. You know, I try to keep a positive energy and I, I did, I did think, to, you know, long way to go. It was a long, long way, to, way to go. Long way to go. How though, how exciting was that minute after that goal? That's, oh, that's the thing about football. Uh, I mean, that during goal. the... 2010 world cup uh i me and a friend were like we were unemployed mm-hmm. and we were like we just graduated college and we were like you know what we're going in hard in this world cup and we went to this world cup bar me and my friend daigo and john occasionally came we would go to this world cup bar not just for american games for right. most games That's- but with the american games like that feeling of of football when there is a goal scoring it's just a level of pumps up that is very unique it's like my wife eating that pizza Mm -hmm. like for a very long time it's just it's great it's it's great i mean sports brings people together which is what we love which is why we love this show just made me think of an emotion i realize is a great there's something really lovely and it happens with these big like world cups or other sports i've watched i've watched and if any sport if any big event like i'm a bit like i can just get into it mm-hmm. there's something really nice about in your mind when you go do you know what fuck my whole life for like two weeks my mm-hmm. whole life 
is watching this sport. And I don't know what that is. It's like a freeing feeling. It is. It's so nice to turn your brain. I mean, it's something oh. I tell people all the time about sports. I'm like, to turn your brain off to, yes, you get your heart broken by it. Mm -hmm. But to just get to experience those emotions oh. without any actual life repercussions. Yes. I, it doesn't actually, yes. I know I leave this room and it doesn't actually matter, but it's really fun to ride those rides. I love it. I, I mean, I have like, I mean, I talk about this all the time. I, I, sports is probably one of two things that really can make me cry very quickly. Oh, mate. Because my emotions are so tied to it, which is concerning a little bit, but. Yeah. I'm, I'm there with you, mate always yeah i cried a bit when england women won the other day oh yeah just it felt like ah uh. yeah but that that feeling of being in that england bar was very it was exciting it was exciting it was exciting until it was very much not exciting and five italian men out of about 300 <laughs> well, people were I, just loving it i mean i've yelled it i've yelled this before and i'll yell it again and this is this is for those of you who don't watch sports there <laughs> Does anyone, does anyone listen to this who doesn't watch sports? I would say half, if not oh, more. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> what are um, you doing? Uh, no, it's good because we explain Can things. I just ask one thing? Of course. Sorry, I've interrupted your story, but no. will people have people message you going, I didn't like sports, and then now I like sports. Yes. You converted and, people. And the bigger one is couples. Couples who are like, he likes sports, she doesn't. They both listen to the podcast, and then they have something to talk about. Lovely okay finish your story and know. then i have no then i have a lovely couple's uh sports story to tell you uh my story was, what was italian it? men in a bar annoying oh, yeah. me oh when you have a sports bar because i i used to go to a commander's bar to watch my commanders play and you see how i'm updating my language uh, which is my which is my American football team. Yes. Oh, they've got a new name now. They're not just called the football team. Yeah, we now are called the Commanders. Okay. That's not the best. It's a lot of syllables. America, guys, you guys are good at a lot of things. Not good at name, good names for, not very creative. Well, we're the kings of it. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a nightmare and I hate the name, but um, they would let other fans in. And I was like, hey, is your bar not packed on a Sunday morning mm -hmm. at 10 a.m.? Could you, other when you when you say we're a sports bar for this team, that's it. If nobody else comes in who isn't that thing, I would get so. I was like, I'm not coming to your bar until you yeah. shut it down. You it sh if you're going to say we're an English sports bar, yeah, don't let that's it. Isn't. Nobody comes in with an Italian. Jersey. Let's go full that's Brexit. Full Brexit. No Italians allowed. I think that's the way it should be. Let's ruin the economy yeah. of this bar. I remember for I the went sake to, of it being all English, which went, is the perfect analogy for Brexit. One Sunday night, I was trying to watch like a, a football game. American football game and the Giants were playing and I guess I was a Giants bar and they were like and they were like are you rooting for the Giants and I was like uh I don't really care and they were like we, we just like every table here is this is a Giants bar we just don't and I was like totally fine respect I love I literally was like love that I'm out yeah yeah exactly <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I'll out. go to another bar but I would kept being like but love what you're doing love what you're doing but yeah not for me what is it about the um, emotional state of a person that thinks I'm going to be in a bar with all the rivals and I'm going to be in a huge what, what is that person's mind let me tell you something tell I almost about did person. a story this week because there was a guy at an LAFC game or he was wearing an LC jersey who just was literally at, the entire section was throwing beer at him <laughs> And I was like, there, and he's just sitting there, like, and I'm like, there's a, there is a mental sickness. I think yeah. it's troll like mentality. Yeah, right? it's like it's, it's real life troll. -like. It's fascinating to me, and I think it's like I've always wanted to read a study about it, about like people who genuinely love being yelled at. They haven't been punched, I don't think, or something. It must be like you haven't been beaten up yet. Yeah, you and don't just, have that fear. So it's like ah, oh, they're just don't. And it's like yeah, it's like I don't get it. But yes, I was literally watched the video, and I was like, we almost were going to do it on the show because I was like, this guy's just getting. Hang and on, you said thrown beers. Was he at a Galaxy game? He was at, I don't even know what he was at. The problem was I, I didn't do enough research on it because I would, but he was just every beer, oh. every direction on this So despite one. the fact you had nothing to talk about this week, you didn't do enough research on this one. Because we have such better stories, which brings us to <laughs> our first story. But before we do it, let's hit the theme song and let's get going. You're a number one fan, so you know the stats. Heard all the pundits talking, so you know enough of that. Maybe it's time to hear some crazy folks chat about all the other stuff that's behind the net. But maybe you don't care about playing ball, and you want to hear the gossip where the big goes small. Maybe it's time to hear some funny folks talk about what goes on when the batter don't walk. Maybe you'd like to hear a little more. Maybe you don't even care about sports. Either way, go on and buckle up your shorts. 
Cause this is everything but the scores with Danny Jollis Yeah, doggity And welcome back What'd you think of the theme song? Oh, brilliant Thank you um, <laughs> <laughs> I love the bit at the end <laughs> It really does, right? It has a nice come down. The end, yeah, that you la- lands nicely. Uh, Zach Weber with that theme song. Don't say it enough. Don't shout him out enough. Oh, it's, it's he's every week's theme song. Is not. Yeah, Carly Craig said she was going to write his theme song. Never happened. Never arrived. It's weird. People don't want to do well, she, work for free. She. <laughs> She was a guest. Did I not allow her to be a guest oh, yeah, for free on my show? Uh, how also. Hollywood of you? Uh, Pay you an exposure. Um, our our first story is less a story <laughs> and more what I believe is going to be your area of expertise. Let's talk about this year's World Cup that's coming up. Oof. And specifically, another exciting installment in our, en- in our ongoing series of this show of how much of a fucking nightmare is this fucking World Cup going to fucking be? Mm. Chris, how much of a fucking nightmare is this fucking World Cup going to fucking be? Well, it's going to be a fucking nightmare, mate, because uh, <laughs> it's going to be fucking hot. It's going to be fucking hot. Fucking hot. The games, uh, for us, the first two group games, it's going to be too fucking early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with this. Just I love it. I love it. No, this is how it goes. In. Too fucking um, early. England versus USA. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fucking good. It's going to be fucking good. Um, but the issue is, obviously, it is being played in a country where it is illegal to be homosexual you gotta be homosexual uh which uh is not good not and a lot of people died to build some stadiums and basically a graveyard underneath the stadiums graveyard on the stadiums and i can give you more highlights if you'd like please give me more well let's not forget of course the, the so the, the one that's this one's a fun one the fun one is they don't have enough hotel rooms yes yeah, so you have to stay on a cruise ship or tents they're I mean, selling tents, <laughs> or they're they're selling tents now. Camping, uh, yes, in in four hundred degree heat. Oh, yes, uh, similar to a Firefest esque situation. They wow, are, I didn't know that. Yeah, selling yeah. tents. They are selling tents. They're selling tents. That's mm-hmm. funny. That is a new thing. Uh, yes. Then also, people are getting cruise ships. The American World, and this is a little bit of new news. The American World Cup team just announced they are staying on an island. Are they? They are going to go be on an island called. Uh, it's a. Doha Hotel, which is on a man-made island, yeah. um, it's called the Pearl, and it Harper, don't you dare, and it's uh, and it's, but basically they can uh, they get to be on an island, so there's slightly separate laws, Harper, and they can enjoy themselves because it's impossible to live on in Qatar. It is very hard to do anything. Fun. As in, they can have, <laughs> they can have gay sex. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I was about to say it, and then I thought, I don't want that to be... No, but, like, yeah, well, I, because well, that's but, the only law well, we'd mention. What are the other... What can they... They can drink alcohol. Like, no, hang on, you could drink... Cannot so, drink alcohol. You drink in a hotel. Cannot drink in a hotel. You drink in a hotel in Qatar? I don't believe you can. I believe the in only... In Dubai, you can. In Dubai, is there in Qatar, there, the alcohol rules are... So they're going to allow a little bit of drinking before the game. A little bit. No alcohol in the stadiums. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not always just... That's oh, none at all. Yeah, that's 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 weird. That's not good. That's not good. I so they want people to enjoy the memories yes. and to be high and so on it is the technically sport. a dry country. There yeah. is a couple places you can buy it where it's right. like super upsold, but you're not allowed to bring it in even like through a- anything. Yes, uh, Noah with answers. No, I'm just, I, I'm just looking like just off a quick search like alcohol. It's not illegal in Qatar, but uh, drinking in public, zero tolerance, and drunk in public. Is oh, okay. A crime. So, all right. So could, maybe hotels. It's. I think it's the Dubai rules, um, where in a hotel you can kind of do whatever. Because that's. Because yeah. Now also, just going back to the uh, gay sex thing. Yeah. Also, not allowed to have normal sex. What? Uh, cannot have sex oh, out of wedlock. Out of wedlock. Seven years in jail. Like I'm just trying to think. When I always think of that, and like, how are you? The only way you're going to get caught is if you do it in public, which obviously. They don't like you do much in public there, so that's double whammy. Mm-hmm. Probably double sentence. The other one is, I guess, if you have sex with someone at wedlock, and you don't do, uh, who's going to be, who's going to rat you out there? It has to be one of the two of you. Maybe you do so badly at I, having so, sex that so, the other person s- reports you to the police. So this is where it gets to. Then, me- then, you, then you incriminate yourself. Sorry, this is. This. <laughs> <laughs> you just be like, do you know what? I was such a terrible experience. Let's both go to prison for seven years. Let's go to prison for seven. I mean, where well, you can have more sex. That's true. Although probably not. 
Because then you're going to get more sentences out of Yeah, what happens you're gonna there? Get more years you out of it. Yeah, they're oh, yeah, going to... No, wow, it's like you've got a prison inside the prison. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like that movie with Sylvester Sloan and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I have not watched such a movie. What movie is this? It's, it's, it's not actually like that film. It's the one oh. where he's called... He's locked there. He's, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone plays a guy who gets himself put in prison to break out of prisons to show them holes in their security. And it's called... Lock... No, Lock Up is a bro- movie from the 80s of him and Brian Brown. Um... Sylvester Stallone knowledge. It's cool. I'll tell you what, I don't know what I don't know how you're testing concussion wise, but you're pulling up some very impressive names right now of movies. <sighs> what was it? I watched it the other day. He's Escape Plan. Escape Plan. Ah. Good, actually a good movie. Oh, I mean Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. One movie going to be tough to understand. You don't want subtitles on, but I'll yeah. tell you right now, it's going to be a good movie. <laughs> yeah, you are. A, you it's are. It's going to be a good movie. It was a good movie. It's very good. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, actually a very good actor. Arnie, he come off, come off a bit of politics. Uh, he's no, in he he was coming out of uh, coming out of his politics. Yeah, he was a bit rusty. Yeah, he's a bit uh-huh, rusty. Uh-huh. He's a bit rusty. He's been rusty for a while. Yeah, he's been rusty since sort of nineteen eighty two. We yeah. there was a moment where I was close to something he was maybe going to be involved with, and so I did like a lot of like, let me watch quickly what Arnold's up to, Oof. and I will say it was like, all right. We can write this. We it was as in he was going to maybe be in the thing. He was maybe going to be in you the were thing writing that I was writing. And then, and so we were, but we really had to change the character dramatically. You can't, you can't. He's not a sub. You really have to so change just, the character you have to, make, to be. You just Arnold go. Schwartz Arnold Schwarzenegger is now this person. Yeah. Uh, so you can't have sex at all. You can't have sex at all. At all. Uh, but again, you were married. Very hard for them to test that. Very hard for them to test that. But also they go through the bins. But also quite the and big, that's a terrible job. Seems like a big risk. Seems like a bit. Well, if you were there, would you? If you were there with your fiance, you, did you talk about her name on here? Yeah, Jess. Right. Jess is not. <laughs> I figured if you were there, Jess, oh, sorry, has, been a, Jess has been a guest. Jess has been a guest. So if you and Jess were there, uh-huh. would you? And she was like, "Hey, let's do it tonight." Would you be not worth it? Because well, you're a guy. You don't like taking risks. Absolutely, don't love taking risks. Uh, I would do nothing. So first off, as I would somebody, do nothing. as somebody who really wants to go to a World Cup, I think it's. I think one and, of the, and you love camping. One of my biggest. I hate it with every ounce of my body. Is what um, what fans will be there? because there's always diehards i know and that's what scares me because so we've said on this show like because we're having fun with this segment about what how much has a fucking world cup on fucking suck mm-hmm. but we do i am very much convinced there will be a serious incident while while it's there because yeah hooligans english ones english english away fans mm-hmm. so english away fans are showing up and they're being told you can't drink in the stadium yeah so they're gonna get plastered they're gonna get very drunk before they get there then they're going to show up. They're going to get. They tend to be rowdy as a unit. They do. Now we have Qatar police who, from my research, seem to be quite intense. Yeah, I imagine that. <laughs> they're not chilled out, guys. So those two parties yeah. are going to be next to each other. I don't know, Chris. I, my theory is it could go two ways. Extremely hot British people can either get too drunk and too hot that they'll just be like sleepy by the time the game starts <laughs> or on the flip side extra crazy mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. there's only one way to find out but yeah i hope no what yeah you're right it's gonna be a fucking nightmare it's a fucking nightmare it's a fucking nightmare it's very exciting it's both exciting a little bit because it's like it's fun to talk about it. and every week there's new i mean the fact that usa is has an island that's that was their strategy was we're gonna get an island mm-hmm. uh that is the level places are going to my thought process was People would fly in day of, fly out. It's crap though, isn't it? It's like the, the, that, this l- loses all the fun. I've never been to one. I just love to go to one, but obviously I've really been to a lot of football games. Well, but when it comes to LA, well, I'm definitely going to go to one. And I'm definitely going to go to one when it's in LA. Yeah, I'm so excited. That's in four years. Yeah, 2026. So um, to, it's all the fun of it is the whole being. So I've followed a British Lions rugby team around New Zealand. It's amazing. You just don't even if what you want. What does that mean? So here we go. <laughs> rugby. What does what do those words mean? I, I know rugby. Said. So rugby. Rugby. Right? But those of you who don't know sports, rugby is. Rugby is if American football didn't have pads and had slightly, and it's more, more continuous, but also had some other weird shit you didn't understand. It's like, it's got less, it's not like stop after, it's not made for adverts like American football is. It's yes. like continuous, but massive guys running really hard into each other. Mm-hmm. And people uh, my size uh, who then get concussed and stop playing. But um, <laughs> so it rugby isn't played by many countries around the world at a high level. New Zealand, best team in the world over the last 30 years, pretty much. Only got 4 million population, but 
they are the best because they literally breathe it. It's their number one sport and they're just taught to play from a young age. England have won the World Cup before. They won it when I was 18 in Australia. Australia are good. South Africa are good. Rugby World Cup. Rugby World Cup. So you get you get generally 20 you get generally 20 teams. Huh? But what happens is every 4 years, every 4 years, you get the British and Ireland uh British and Irish Lions tour where they will tour to one of the southern hemisphere teams by mixing England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland together. And you said the word tour? T O U R. Tour. How do you say that? Oh, tour. Tour. Got it. Tour. Fucking hell. <laughs> Water. Tour. Okay, right. That's a new word. I'll add it to the list. Tour. <laughs> tour? Does that sound weird? Sounds like I'm saying Thor. Did you know what he was saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh, that's me. Mate, get on that Luminosity app. Your mum was right. <laughs> I told you. I'm so, so basically every four years, we go down there and you're mixing England, Wales, Ireland and Scotland who normally all play against each other. In, in a, they normally play once a year against each other in a British, uh, in the, uh, what the fuck's it called? The, uh, the Six Nations with Italy and France as well. So they all play against each other, but they combine every four years and they do a tour and they play three test matches against New Zealand and then four years later it'll be like Australia and then four years later it'll be South Africa and you play best of three test matches and if you win two of the test matches you win the tour right. but it's very exciting so we followed it around New Zealand and you get people from Wales Ireland Scotland and it's just like every city is just packed so with so fans from it. and it's so fun I didn't get into any of the stadiums because like 18 had no money but you'd just be in the bars drinking then the players you'd be in like the main area then the players after the game they'd be in the bar drinking view as well That's so fun. I remember seeing one of the players called Oh, something Shanklin. We're in this bar like shit face. We were like 18, like having such a fun time. We'd lost, and this is in New Zealand, we lost every test match. I think it was after the second one. I think he was injured and he was in the toilet and he said to my mate, can you get um, some condoms out of the machine for me? And he goes, oh, cool. You Have you got lucky tonight? He goes, nah, I'm just going to put them on my head and dance around the bar. And then he just put a condom on his head and danced around the bar. And that's a professional sportsman. <laughs> that is amazing. What, what, a story for your, what a story for your friend to be like. <sighs> yeah, it's great. Any of those. And then we met and so we chat to a couple of the right players, but they were a bit like, they were trying to pull girls and kind of met this one guy who's from New Zealand. He was the captain of the soccer team for New Zealand. Obviously soccer there is like so inferior to rugby. Mm -hmm. The nicest bloke called Chris Jackson. And he just like drunk with us all night. And I was just like, he's had like a hundred caps for his country. Wow. It was like a proper, I was just like stuff like that. I love it. Yeah. That's the only thing I get excited. I don't care about celebrities only professional sports it's also fun just level. to spend time in new zealand with like that kind of mission of just like we're gonna just oh, go yeah. like you have a goals yeah exactly it was brilliant that's oh, so fun. so fun ah never done it never followed the team around um so anyway so those hooligans coming in mm -hmm. i think it's gonna be a disaster i think yeah. it's gonna be a really big problem i just think i do think that maybe but also i think it might just weed out the effort to get there will weed out the mm -hmm. casual arsehole and it might just be people who I feel like you're gonna have to have quite a lot of money to go. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it's gonna cost. That's a good question. Is what is it gonna cost to go to Qatar? And I just think like for these games, but they must. But it's a World Cup. But the I no, mean, the no public drinking is the nightmare because, like, like, I, like in the thing I was at in New Zealand, you just we were just on a massive screen watching. Mm -hmm. England in the Rugby World Cup final, the one after we won it, we lost in the final South Africa and it was in Paris. And me and some friends just got in a car and drove to Paris. I just drunk mm -hmm. in front of the Eiffel Tower. And, but there was like 50,000 of us just yeah. drinking. But if you can't drink, it's like, then you're just in a crowd of people. Then you're in a crowd of people. In the heat. You, and then, well, also everybody's going to be like, you just think of people being like, Oh, I'm gonna to try to just sneak some in. There's gonna be a lot of. Oh, let me just sneak some in, mm -hmm. and that's not gonna go well. Someone, definitely, definitely week one. There's gonna be some British people in jail there. In jail, and then it's like for they're like, in jail for three years, and then you got yourself a situation. What's the one? Some guy, a friend of a friend, is in like five years in prison in Dubai for having CBD oil in his bag or something. Mad. Really, a friend of yours? A friend of a friend. Oh, something crazy like that. Yeah, that's so. That's why I won't go to. A, I, I get very nervous about going to countries like that. You can I get, still go and just not. Bring CBD. Yeah, but I assume he didn't know he had it. He forgot it was in his... I mean, it's just like... Yeah. You know, it's like... I mean, yes, I would obviously literally be scrub. I would just be like, everything has to... I'm checking every pocket of everything. <laughs> you would just have no pockets yeah. on any of your so, items. So anyway, so the quick answer is if Jess and I were there, no, we would not... I would not be touching her while we were there. I'd be <laughs> like, do not look at me. I just want to get in and out of this country in a reasonable, in a reasonable time. I just want to be respectful of their lives. Having an affair over there, I just realized, must be extra, extra, Brutal. extra, like, oh. like, do you know what I mean? Like, how much do you hate your marriage that you 
broke the law yeah. to sleep with someone else. You got that's a good point. Really maybe maybe, for, maybe fidelity, or maybe it makes it extra exciting if you're a thrill seeker. That's true. Make, ask anyone if they've cheated on their wives in um in in, in guitar. In, in guitar. Those guitar, guitar listeners that we have. Uh, <laughs> I bet you've got a couple. I if there's anybody who's even been to Qatar, please write. Please I write think, into have the I show. Been, no, I did shows in. I've done shows in Dubai, Bahrain, and is Doha which country? Have you done? Have you done um, Abu Dhabi? I think I've been Abu Dhabi mm-hmm. and Doha is, is Doha in Qatar? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. I have. It, I, is, it is the capital. I have. Yeah. I did a show in D- Doha. Wow. So I went there. And, and what was it like? It was fun. There was a guy. Um, at, the whole time we're talking about this. You don't want to mention it. No, 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 no. I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> so I remembered it was it's just in my 20s for stand up. I just go anywhere and do it like, without really thinking about the moral implications of the countries I was going to or anything. So I didn't even. I think I even knew that there was um, sure. homosexuality was illegal. But, but said, the gig, it was do, just it was, it was so, the but, but just to get clear, you do condone what they do there and wanted to be there. Got it? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, mate. Very Hollywood of me. <laughs> Say one thing, do another thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, yeah. <laughs> I the show in Doha. We did one night in Doha. It's just, just in a it's in a nice hotel and it's just to expats and it was totally the gig but you know what it's like you just go do a gig you don't think of everything else but there was a guy in the airport and this is quite common over there who was traveling and he had a um uh, a hawk on his shoulder in the airport that he went through security with a bird of prey it's quite common in arab countries for people to have a bird of prey as a pet and they will often get on an airplane with one so you're telling me yep that on top of the alcohol restrictions in the stadium on top of the no gay sex gay sex on top of no regular sex mostly yeah you tell me there's also a chance hawks are going to be in the stadium there's a chance hawks are going to be in the stadium world cup just came around on (laughs) (laughs) exactly they need something to carbon offset the uh, draconian rules yeah yeah now i'm interested in this world cup all right we'll be right back oh hey there during this break in the action I just wanted to throw out there that this is the perfect opportunity to write a comment or subscribe, or if you're listening, you can just uh, give us a rating and a thing, whatever you want. Just this is the moment where during this break, since we don't have a Patreon or anything, this is the moment to do something like that. It'd mean a lot. All right, back to the action. And we're back. Right. That um, was a great song. <laughs> it's no song this oh, time. Shit. You son of a... <laughs> Unbelievable. Guess wrong. Jesus. I'm starting to think you don't listen to this podcast every week. You know, well, I'll listen to this one because I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love it. You can watch it also on YouTube. Those of you listening, you can watch. Those of you watching, you can listen. Check it out. Check it out. You can just subscribe or watch the other one if you're doing the other one because it helps with the numbers. YouTube's popping though. YouTube is popping these days. Now, Chris. Yes. This suggestion of this story came from at Cinema Guy one who wrote me and said, and we and I indicated that this would happen because I've always been like, please tell me stories, and then I usually get very excited by them, and then end up usually not naming the person who did it. But this time I want to shout out because I'm gonna because he said it, it, he made a good point. He said I found something better than my favorite thing, cat on the field, mm-hmm. or a goalie fight. It's a guy who leaves up to catch a foul ball, call, causing his chili fries and beer to rain down on fans around him. That in slow much motion is so much fun to watch over and over. That is a phenomenon we don't talk about enough. Let me have what well, okay. So at baseball games, people are trying to catch foul balls. We've talked about it many yeah. times. Have you been to a baseball game? I have, yes. Have you ever caught a foul ball? Uh I have not caught a foul ball, but I wish that had happened to break up the monotony of that twelve hours. <laughs> it's a tough sport. I don't know. That's right, mate. Well, we'll talk about cricket afterwards, and then we. I've, there's a we good... spent a we spent a whole episode on quick on cricket. Shout out to Kapil Talwalker. We have a full episode based around cricket. Uh, cricket around cricket. Uh, <laughs> Shit. I fuck. Oh, Restart the whole podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just jump out the window. Right uh, we have a whole episode dedicated to it, specifically the cheating scandal. Oh, that w- yeah. There's been a few, but the uh, with the uh, match, the sort of. Trying to do as many dot balls in a in a note. There's lots of cheating. There was a. Uh, it was the, uh, the 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 rubbing the the Hansi Kronje, the South African. This is an old story. Yes, it was a, it was an Australian somebody who South had, African guy who used to cheat with mm-hmm. the soil, and then mm-hmm. and then he and then he subsequently ha, uh, has died by suicide. I don't think we. I don't think we told that story then. Uh, <laughs> Keep it upbeat, Chris. <laughs> uh, 
No, then it's not that story because our guys were alive because I looked. Okay. Oh, the Australian ones. Yes. Yeah, that was the more. I was recent. like, nobody died in that one. I, w- I actually would. There's quite a few different. I do research. There's I a lot of research. cheating in cricket. You can all you got to do is rub a bit of soil on a ball. I mean, that's who's going to who's going to resist that? He had some sort of like he had something soil. on him. Yes. There's a British guy, English guy, Atherton did it years ago, mm-hmm. and then yeah. Oh yeah, great. So, what he pointed out was that in 2019, a unique one happened, where this fan had two in one game. What? That's hard to do. You see his first one over here. Is this Dodgers? San Francisco. The foul ball. Yes, we want to make sure that volume is down. What? That's a great cat. Oh, oh. And there go the fries. Oh, he, jo- he lost the fries. And he lost his fries. But he got the ball? But he did get the ball. And that's an exciting moment. And at this point, you're feeling pretty good. How much does the ball go for, by the way? Would he make um, in profit of the fries he lost? Would he uh, make over $10? <sighs> I don't think so. Ooh. I think a standard foul ball is not going to get you that much. Unless it's like a major like World yeah. Series game. Mm-hmm. Um, He's at a net loss there. Because okay. this, this, is, this is a spring training ball. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you right now, this ain't going to get me nothing. Okay. But I like it, and I think it's fun to have around. That's great. Did you catch it yourself? Uh, no. Uh, well, I so knew well. a baseball player, and he threw it to me. So. Oh, no. Okay, that's that's on that's what I would imagine how you got that ball. <laughs> it wasn't quite as great a story as I wanted to okay. be, which is why I don't talk about how I got it. You know no one's ever could, asked. No one's ever asked. Honestly, spring training, you could absolutely lie about it as well. Oh yeah, I could have, but I'll I didn't. That out. Instead, I did. Please, I reached up, I caught it. He lost a three course meal, but he lost one. his fries, and I assume a hot dog in there. I mean, there's got to be something else. No way, it's just fries. But and, it's... yeah, and the price of those at a game, maybe my ten dollars was an underestimate. He's probably lost twenty dollars worth of food, oh, and yeah. maybe got five dollars worth of ball. Yeah. Now the Next inning, I'm going to say again, next inning. Here we go. Here we go. Back up there. And our boy. This time, oh, a pizza. Oh, <laughs> oh. And didn't get the ball. Yeah, this you, time, didn't get the ball. You know, he didn't. You, yeah. And this time, a little less happy. Less happy. <laughs> this time. I like the fact is presumably his dad immediately call someone after the ball incident well because i i think the first one he probably was like we were on tv because they probably were making fun of him but he was like we got the ball it's worth it this one ah. that's funny do you know what that shows there's a lesson for not always being on your phone because the dad had the phone in hand mm-hmm. and that didn't help his catching no you gotta in baseball game i do think you have to have more than any other sport head on a swivel you've got to be ready you gotta be ready I'm can just... i have you seen the very recent cricket one where someone caught a ball in their pint glass no caught it in their pint glass yeah it's if you t- it happened like a month ago i think if you type in cricket ball okay now i'm gonna try to do this pint glass. without drawing this to a complete yeah try not to grind it to a halt but it's like a comp- cricket i can look it up if you guys want to we go, can go, we can go. Are you are you using a PlayStation remote to go on YouTube? Get a real remote for stuff like you. Come on, mate. Oh, let me tell you something, you son of a bitch. Um, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know your dad was a PlayStation. You're you gonna know, get upset. I, was... I only have so much technology in this room. Yeah, okay? got we got seventy five things going in here. I think we're doing pretty good. Cricket pitch. It's got to be pint. Here we go. Pint catch. Ugh, it's just gonna be so hard. This is what this is what takes a while. This way is what it takes a while. It's oh. gonna be fine. I mean, this is not great for the podcast. It's fine. Who doesn't like to hear you searching on the internet? <laughs> on a, what else are these people doing? Some of these people don't even like sport. They might love people searching stuff on the internet more than they like sport. There we go. Fan takes a bit. Oh no, that's not it. It's not a diving Sorry. catch. It's not. Oh, that's bizarre. Yeah, you hate to see this. No, no, that's in his beer cup ten one? years ago. No, ten no, years it was like ago. it was very recent. Oh, we're gonna find it. We're gonna find it in between. You, 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 anyway, we're gonna find it. In Keep between going this. to your story. So that was the point. The guy, the guy having two catches. That was good. Because I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why you're ruining this search. <laughs> <laughs> because you're looking at pint. This is an American YouTube. Yeah. Nobody's gonna pint in there. Cricket ball beer. Uh huh. Cricket ball beer. You gotta Americanize what he says. Absolutely, Captain. Honest. Right, <laughs> yeah, that's correct. You do need to translate because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. YouTube, YouTube speaks, knows this YouTube sp- it knows you're in LA. Oh yeah, oh, it, it knows. knows to speak American. Cricket ball beer. Just yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. We um ten years ago. This is oh, click it, click it. Hang on, mate. My one month ago. Yeah, we go. 
Okay, great. And now we're watching an ad. <laughs> but we did it. I'll tell you what, though. That was... But maybe someone needed a Wii, and that was a good point of the podcast to go do a Wii. Sometimes a podcast can be too... Not to schedule. Chris. We have built in. A Wii. You're so British sometimes. Take, <laughs> take, take a piss. I'll take a piss. It's done. Someone's made this video odd. but You yeah. see? This is what we're going to do. We're going to fix... Come. Know, this is upsetting. Come back, come back to, we're going to come back to this. I promise you we will have this, we <laughs> will discuss this in a second. I've ruined the, the podcast. The important thing here is, you got to be careful when you go to a baseball game. <laughs> if you have food in your hands. <laughs> you got to factor this in accordingly right. to what you're doing. Because you will screw it up. So like, like that you wouldn't have sex in, um, in When Doha, I go to a baseball game, if you, I'm in a section. You don't have any snacks in a seat. You only eat on the concourse. No, no, you can have snacks, but you don't want to be, in baseball games. Hands full. Well, first off, you want to know where you are. Used to be, before they put the nets up, if you were down the line, it was like head on, literally head on a swivel when you went to a baseball game. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that, I think people who bring a glove to a game, that's lame. That is, you're going to sit there with a glove in your hand the whole game? A whole game, because maybe one comes your way, it's like, knock it off. Baseball is one of the sports, I will say, that like everyone is way too ready to play. Even the coach, <laughs> do you know what I mean? The coach is in full kit. Yeah, we never understood why that I've is. always like, what, yeah. how many how many injuries are you going to have that this 58-year-old man's going to come on mm -hmm, and play? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the same in the crowd, holding a, having a glove in your hand, you're like, come on, man. Come on. Like, you catch it like a real pro. You're going to want to take it off the hand. It's going to break your hand. That hurts so much. Did it? Like that first catch that guy tried to make, that hit straight hand. That's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. So much. Oh, take a baseball. So if one was coming at you, would you still try and catch it with bare hands? Absolutely. All right, okay. Absolutely. you got to do it. Uh, not just would I. I would immediately, and I mean as fast as humanly possible, run to the nearest kid and give it to them. Because that's how you're going to end up on TV. Within seconds, I would be handing that to a kid. Just for the cameras, and as soon as they move away, you go, give me that fucking ball back, mate. Uh -huh. That was just for the cameras. I'd hand it to the kid, I'd turn. Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah. who I am. That's what I am. <laughs> you know, shake hands with the mother. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. That's who I am. And, you know, an inning later, be like, give back to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? Come on. Yeah. You're, you're risking. But the rest risk. of the inning, they could be talking about you and potentially mm -hmm. calling you a hero, and I want that moment. Of course. Of it's, course. Who but I live for that stuff. All right, let's do some quick stories. During this break in the action, if you have a story idea, send it to me. You can email it to me. You can message me on Instagram. You can message me on Twitter. You can message me on yeah, all the ways to send it to me. Send me ideas. I'll shout you out. I like it. I don't know everything. Send me ideas. All right, back to the show. Now, right, we're going to do some quick hits. We're not going to worry about what's on the screen, actually. Um, ahem, these are some quick stories. And Chris, you're going to love these. Great. And nothing stressful happened during the break. <laughs> um, the story... <laughs> The Saudi Arabian, uh, speaking of Saudi Arabia, yeah. there's a golf league oh, yes. called the Live Golf Tour. The Live, Live Golf Tour. They've been offering people insane amounts of money. Mm -hmm. And the one question everybody's had is, when will they go after Tiger Woods? Mm -hmm. They apparently have been going after Tiger Woods, and he has turned them down. Interesting. But they just released the amount he was offered. Yeah? How much? Somewhere between 700 to $800 million That's insane. that he turned down. Well done, that man. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. That's impressive. His rebirth. That he is just, a... he's, he's, he's won the major after that long time, mm -hmm. and the injury, he's survived basically dying. Five different times. And he's got his, his legacy in he's mind. So he's like, I don't want to tarnish it. Smart. More it's... than I did when I slept with 4,000 women. Hey. Who hasn't done that? Consensually. Consensually. That's all I've said about that thing. I <laughs> know it with a hand raise. I know. Every time with that tiger story, I would just always be like, consensually. Consensually. It's che cheating on a wife is very different than other things. I don't like cheating on a wife. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't agree with it. But it's a different story. With it. But the fact it was consensual, I said, hey, that's a different ball game. It's a different ball game. That's a different ball game of anger for me. Um. Deshaun Watson last week, we reacted live on air, got suspended six games for 23 different uh, sexual assault allegations from massage therapists, wow. uh, 66 in general complaints Wow, came forward. All from a massage, masseuses? Yes. <sighs> Only suspended six games. Only suspended six games. Only suspended six Jesus games. Jesus Christ. You would think to yourself he'd be suspended more. Cleve, he's playing for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. So he now they are appealing 
the uh, suspension, the NFL. NFL wants him to be suspended longer. So the team suspended him for six games. The they sent it to a, a judge. So a ju- they oh the, a federal judge. The judge had to come out of there to hear the sides, and then the judge said six games. But then the way it works now is the NFL then appeals that, and then the person who decides that is the NFL. So basically, I don't know what the point of the judge was, right? Because yeah. the NFL is just making the decision yeah, at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah. On a separate note, the American Massage Therapy Association is holding its annual conference in Cleveland later this month, where he uh, now plays. So uh, that is going to be uh, tough for the American uh, Massage Theory Association, who from August 25th to 27th will be hosting at the downtown hotel, where he is going to be actively. uh, I mean, I imagine half their conversations have been around this type of a guy, and he is just going to be in the same uh, city as that. Same city, and also not playing games. Not playing games. So probably quite stressed. And quite stressed. He's going to need a massage. He's going to need a massage. There's going to be a lot of massages there. And yet... I believe uh, he's not going to be a lot, but it's going to be a problem. But I, it was uh, just a pretty That's awful, serendipitous yeah. to have your th- your conference at the same place that he is. Um, Keep your uh, friends close and your enemies closer, right? That's a great point. <laughs> that's a very good point. One last story. Yeah. One last story. Um, the Buffalo Bills have the greatest fan base in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Von Miller has been playing for them. He said he didn't like the toilet paper in the hotel. He has now had to come out and say, please stop sending me toilet paper because all the all of the fans of the Buffalo Bills are just sending him toilet paper. <laughs> just great. That's the great fan base. What a great fan base. That's good, clean fun. That's good, clean fun. That's good, clean sports fun right that's there. That's great. Love it. Love um, it. That's just a lovely time. All right. That's the fastest quick hits we've ever done. We're moving quick hits fast. We're quicken. Here we go. We're closing it up now. Oh, hey, during this break in the action, I have nothing else to say. I just want to give us a break in the action. Thank you for watching. Keep subscribing, rating. All right, we go. let's go back. And we're back. Chris. Hi. What an episode. It was fun. It was a great time. Thanks we covered a here. lot, mate. We did cover a lot. We tend to cover a lot here. We move through We move through the issues. Love it. And yet. Not much like sports. This is great. Sports, my friends. Sports and friends. That's what sports is all about. Chris, you have anything <laughs> you want to plug? <laughs> um... Now, you can. I've got a podcast where I chat to. I haven't actually had you on it, but I would like to when I do another series season, as you guys say here, called Getting My Dad to Say I Love You, where um, I chat to comics about their uh, relationships with their parents and try and get my dad to say I love you to me. Does your uh, dad not say I love you? He's just a British man. He doesn't. His way of doing it is to sort of just give me um, rides to the airport yeah. instead of saying the words. Got it. Um, but yeah, all the stuff's on. I'm on at Chris M Comedy on all of the things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just find it. Find You'll find it. it. You'll figure you guys, it out. You guys are smart people. Noah. Uh, no dates. Just uh, you know the usual. Watch the special on YouTube, and then the Don't Tell Secret set also on YouTube. Yes. Ask Noah set. Copper on Instagram. Ooh. I'll be a Dynasty typewriter this Saturday night with a dear friend, and then uh, the next week after that we have Comedy on State with Taylor Tomlinson, and then uh, Eugene Oregon, August twenty fifth. Woo! <laughs> you gotta give some dramatic excitement. You just gotta do these plugs. It's not fun. Nobody likes doing them, but it's a part hey, of it. So if one person out there wants to come watch you, they'll be happy you plugged it. People do come. People come go. off the plugs. There we go. And now we have one final part of the show. Yeah, throw me a ball. This is. This I'm is ready. Left handed. Oh, no, I've got to shoot. Three shots of glory. Three shots. Three shots. From seated. From seated. Okay. Seated. <laughs> All right. All right, here yeah, we go. First shot, and I he's thought. feeling it. He's yeah. feeling it out. This is important. This is important. Oh, that's awful. That's oh, awful. my God, I've knocked the mic over. This mic's going down. That's okay. All right. Get around there. Look around. All right, first shot, well short, but that's not to, no, nothing to sneeze. I have to, I have to do, I have to do play by play for. Sit half on this. It feels like cheating, but I'm going to allow it. No, no, no. <laughs> so it's just the thing is, I'm slightly to the side. That's right? okay. Oh, no, I hit my hat. Hat's a lot of things to like. Funny thing about me is I'm extremely competitive, so this is not fun for me. (laughs) Has anyone got it in? Yes, two people. Fuck. All right. Oh! We'll see you next week. (laughs) You're a number one fan, so you know the stats. Heard all the pundits talking, so you know enough of that. Maybe it's time to hear some crazy folks chat about all the other stuff that's behind the net. But maybe you don't care about playing ball And you want to hear the gossip where the big or small Maybe it's time to hear some funny folks talk About what goes on when the batter don't walk 
Maybe you'd like to hear a little more Maybe you don't even care about sports Either way, go on and buckle up your shorts Cause this is everything but the scores with Danny Jollis You doggity!